Hi, welcome to this video. We're looking at ZBrush. My name is Michael Wilde, and we're going to be going through the basics of what some consider to be quite a complex piece of software. Although, like many VFX pieces of software, they're all pretty complex. We're going to be going through, in this video, the interface. Now, ZBrush can be quite overwhelming. I know that when I first started learning it, I didn't have a clue. I've been using it now for probably eight or nine years since I was in uni, and now it's just become second nature to me. I know all the quirks and I know how to use it, but when you first start it up, you might not. So we're gonna go through just what all the buttons do, how to get a model in, and how to kind of begin, and then maybe in a second part or another part video, we'll be going through how to actually sculpt and stuff like that. But this one is purely, if you've never seen the software before, or you've wanted to give it a try, and you've opened it up and you've got scared. I understand, don't worry. Cool, so I guess let's begin. So what I've done, um, I'm working with ZBrush 2020 here. I've just installed it, so this is a fresh install. So if you open up ZBrush for the very first time, this is what you should see. If you have any questions, please leave them below. I'll make sure to respond to those. I always try to. First of all, we can see all these things staring back at us. We've got a few creepy faces, one without a child without eyes, fun. So we don't need any of this stuff though. What this is, this is what they call Lightbox. It's basically a way to, we can see up here, we've got loads of tabs. This is how you can bring in different things. We've got different brushes, we've got different textures, we've got different alphas. Usually when I'm using ZBrush, I will never use this. Sometimes if you pick up, if ZBrush crashes and you open it, this will come up and you'll have quick save here. So ZBrush likes to save things. So that might be useful if your file has died. To get rid of the light box, we're just gonna go up here to light box and click that button and now it's gone. So if you were to draw in ZBrush, you can see that doesn't look great. Oh, this is a new feature. Okay, cool. We've got some sort of alpha going on here. That's kind of cool. Okay, I thought I'd drawn on the canvas. So this isn't exactly sculpting. I can't seem to move around. What am I doing here? I'm removing it um, by holding the Alt button, but I want to move around my model, but I can't seem to be able to do that. And that's because ZBrush, they used to describe it as a 2.5D piece of software. I don't know if that's the case anymore, but by default, when you open it up on a new document, you'll just be painting down as if it was Photoshop. You'd be looking top down, but we don't want to do that. We want to actually sculpt. So whenever I open up ZBrush, my first thing I do is I go up to document and I go new document. And that will ask me if I want to save any of this masterpiece. I don't, it looks like a weird Jackson Pollock slash Picasso. I'm gonna click no, and look, we've got a much bigger screen now. So again, that's kind of my default. I always just click, when I open it, I go document, new, and that will just fit it to screen size, which is perfect. So on the left here, we've kind of got our brush settings. So we've got, at the top, we've got our type of brush. Then we've got the way that we are gonna paint with that brush. We've got an alpha, if we wanna add an alpha, if we wanna add a texture, then we've got a material, then we've got color and stuff like that. So like most 3D or 2D pieces of software, on the left, we've kind of got the current tool and how to change it. The good thing about ZBrush is it's all customizable. So if you didn't like this layout, you could change it. I'm not going to in this video. There's already gonna be a lot coming at you. So we're not gonna do that. Then at the top, we've got, along the top, we've got all our kind of, if you were in a Maya, for example, or your kind of drop-down menus, I can scroll through all of those and I can do things, change things, whatever in there. Then underneath that, again, we've got more tool settings. So like if you're using Mari, if you're using Substance and or Photoshop and you want to change, for example, how, how intense your brush was, you can change the draw size. So these settings, they're laid out a little bit differently than other pieces of software, but the kind of the thought process behind them is kind of the same. It's where you adjust the stroke that you're currently making. And yeah, so on the right, you can see here, at the moment, we've just got this little palette here. When we start actually sculpting or using an object, then it's gonna get a little bit bigger. And then so on the left here, we've got some more tools. These are kind of more to do with your canvas and your scene camera. So for example, one here that's grayed out at the moment because we don't have anything in our scene, we've got perspective. Um, we can change it from perspective to an orthographic camera. That's important if you're sculpting a face, for example, you don't really wanna sculpt it in orthographic because it will look really weird. But yeah, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select on the right here. So this is where, for example, you would import a object or something that you wanted to sculpt on top of. But as you can see at the moment, we've got this weird current simple brush as our object. We don't wanna use that. Let's just click, I'm gonna click on this cylinder and now that is our object. So you can see, when, as soon as I've clicked that, we've got all these different menus here. And these menus on the right are really the ones that you're gonna be using um, on a daily basis all the time in ZBrush. This is where you would 
add more divisions to your mesh. This is where you can, for example, remesh them if you want to change the topology. This is where you would apply a texture map, for example, or where you would set up your masking. So these are really important things here. There's a lot of stuff. If I open up all of these, there's a lot of things going on inside of here. So we've got this cylinder selected now. So how do we actually sculpt on the cylinder? So all you need to do is you need to drag it onto your canvas, into your document. So I can pop it like that. I can hold shift to snap it. So usually what I do is I'd snap it the right way up and then we'd be good to go. So now in theory, I'd be able to sculpt on this. So let's try. Oh no, for some reason we've got a second cylinder. And if I do it again, we've got a third cylinder. So this is similar to how when I started it up, I had all those squares, but instead now they're actually 3D, but this is not right. So I wanna sculpt on just this cylinder. Again, I don't really know, this option can be useful. For example, we could make a top-down alpha out of this, and then we could use this as a brush, um, but I've never personally ever actually used this mode. So what we need to do is again, I'm just gonna to go to document, new document. So if you go to new document, this doesn't undo any of the sculpting that you've done on your object, if you've done any, all it does is it just wipes the canvas. So if for example, you've got loads of objects like I just had there or something's looking a bit weird, often I'll just go to document, new document, and that will reset it. So I'm just gonna drop this down. So instead, if we have a look at the top here along this bar, you can see at the moment, we've got this thing called draw mode enabled. So if I were to click again, we draw another cylinder, we draw another cylinder. But what we wanna do is we actually wanna edit this cylinder. So I'm gonna click edit instead. And now this is where ZBrush starts coming into its own. So edit mode is the most important kind of mode inside of ZBrush. We've also got move, scale and rotate. So if you wanted to move the entire object, if you wanted to scale something on the object or you wanted to rotate something on the object, you can click these. But by default, I'm usually probably 90% of the time working in draw mode. So now you can see my cursor has got this rotate kind of icon around it and I can finally rotate around my object. Um, this seems new, I've never seen this guy before and I've never seen this little alpha thing up here, but um, that's that's interesting. Probably can turn them off if you are not if you don't want them. These are 2020 features I'm pretty sure because um, in versions I've been working with before, haven't seen those. So now that this cylinder is ready to be edited, I actually want to bring in something of my own rather than sculpting on the cylinder. As much fun as this would be, it's not a particularly interesting object. So how would I import my own object, for example, an OBJ from a different piece of software? At the top, you can see we've got this panel here. This is where we drop the cylinder in. So instead of using the cylinder, I want to use something else. So what I'm going to do is I want to load that in surely, right? So if I click load tool, you'll see um, no, we've got this. We've got this weird file format called ZTool. So ZTool is ZBrush's own file format. It's how you would save something that you're currently sculpting on if you wanted to reload it in ZBrush later, and it keeps all the internal data. But what I want to do is I actually want to import because it's not a ZTool and it's a mesh from an external piece of software. Then I need to import it rather than pressing load. So by default, when I open up ZBrush and I go load tool to try and get an OBJ, I do it all the time. But if you're struggling to find your object, then you need to click import instead of load tool. So I'm just gonna click import. I've got one on my desktop. Um, it's one I made, let's find it. So I made this last night on a live stream. I was learning to use Marvelous. So it's not gonna be perfect by any means, but I'm just gonna open this. And now you can see, so this is a bag that I was making inside of Marvelous Designer. And you can see we've now got our object and it's kind of good to go. So now if I start drawing on this, I can start sculpting. Then, for example, if you were happy with how your object was looking, you could export that as an OBJ. So I can export this. Say, for example, I sculpted in some folds. Like that, and I was happy with it. Then I could just go export and then export it as an object, as an OBJ. Or I could go save as, save it as a Z tool, and that would save it ready to be picked up at a later date. So we're not gonna to go too much into sculpting and we're not gonna go into how to add more divisions or make it, because at the moment this isn't very high quality. We'll do that in another video because that's a whole topic of itself. But let's quickly just look at some more of the UI elements before we wrap this off. So on the left, um, I've got my brush. So if I click on that, we can see all the other brushes that we can use. And again, this is more for a video on actual sculpting, but let's just have a look at, for example, this brush. So I was just using the standard brush, which kind of added um, shape on top. But let's say, for example, I press the flatten brush now. Let's see the difference that that makes. So let's flatten off the bottom of this. 
So this isn't adding anymore, this is kind of taking away. So you can hold Alt when sculpting to do the opposite of a brush. So now I'm flattening, but I'm flattening upwards. So I could do this if I wanted to, and I could hold Alt, and that would do that. But again, these this is more for a sculpting video. I just want to make sure that you understand what all of these UI elements are doing. So here, underneath that, we're going to go back to brush, and then we're going to go to standard. Along the top, you've got this quick pick menu, and I'm just going to hit standard again and go back to that one. So underneath that, we've got dots. So instead of just drawing, so what this is actually doing is it's dotting. You can kind of see as I slowly add it, dots, dot, dot. But so I could change that, for example, I could do a drag rectangle where I just drag a single one anywhere that I want. I'm going to go along the top. We've got this section that I was talking about earlier where we've got our stroke settings. I'm going to just up the intensity. So Z intensity is how much your brush affects. So it's set to 25. I'm going to set it to 73 just so it's a bit more apparent. And you can see that the drag rectangle is doing a different thing to that dots. Freehand will just kind of add it anywhere. Then what else have we got? We've got spray and color spray. I'm not going to go too much about color because texturing in ZBrush is a whole different thing. So I'm just going to click spray and you'll see what that does. So that sprays that same sort of brush everywhere. And then finally, we've got drag dot, which similar to rectangle, but it's always exactly the same size. So if, for example, you could use this if you wanted to add um, like rivets or something like that, then you just know that they're always consistent size. So I just showed you about the Z intensity along the top, but let's say, for example, I also wanted to change the size of my brush. So I've turned that down a little bit. This is great. I'm going to switch back to dots instead, but I feel the draw size is a little bit big. So I'm going to bring that down a bit. You can see now I'm doing a much smaller effect on the mesh. Let's turn up the Z intensity and turn this down really small and you'll see that then I can get even smaller than that one there. So let's just put those next to each other. So this was the first one and a much bigger brush. This was the second one. This is the third one. So you can change these to affect how your sculpting affects the mesh. Let's look through these last ones. We've got alpha. So at the moment, I'm just stroking with a round brush. But let's say I wanted to add something a bit funky. So this one is kind of cool, this kind of rake pattern down here. I'm going to go to alpha and then alpha 58 down the bottom. I'm going to up the draw size a bit and just draw with that. And you can see that that's a much different effect to how it was previously. I'm going to press Control Z to undo that. So along the top, we've got, you can see we've got this orange bar. So when I just undid, I'm going to redo that by just going to Edit Redo. I'm just going to hit that twice. You can see this, this kind of yellowy orange bar moves along. So this is our undo history. And I can what I can do instead of pressing Control Z is I can just scroll, click that, and drag it along, um, which can be quite handy. This, at the moment, there's only 19. It says undo history 19 out of 19. That can get to thousands. It depends on your settings and preferences for ZBrush. Um, but yeah, so that sometimes I will just drag that along instead of pressing Control Z hundreds of times. So finally, we've also got texture. This is more to do with painting. Again, I don't really paint inside a ZBrush, but I will cover it in a separate video. And then finally at the bottom, we've got material. So at the moment we've got this really, you probably noticed from the beginning, but I'm just so used to it, I didn't say anything. We've got this weird kind of red terracotta clay sort of thing going on. But if you didn't like that, you can click the material and you can play around with some of these other ones. My kind of go-to is basic material. Um, it's just a flat kind of blin, more Lambert-y kind of shading, or you can go to basic material too, I like, because it's got a, a nice kind of spec. If you're doing skin, we've got this nice one called Skin Shade, um, which kind of replicates SSS, and you can see it's softened out um, the details a lot more. Some of these, so let's try, for example, Reflected Foil, is going to give a very different effect, and it also is going to change how your sculpt looks. So it might make it look more intense or less intense. So often I will switch around multiple materials to see how they kind of affect different things, but my go-to is kind of basic material. And then at the bottom here, we've just got a color picker. By default, your mesh will be assigned to the color that you've got it in the color picker. So I usually just set it to white so it's not too dark and then I can see everything that I'm doing. Uh, sometimes if you press the V key on the keyboard, this will press this button here, switch colors. So if your mesh ever just turns black, it's because you've accidentally switched colors. So you can either switch that back, press V on your keyboard, or you can just change this to another color. So we'll just quickly have a look at the things on the right before calling it a day. So here we've got some ways you can kind of 
scroll around, you can move your document. I don't usually use these and it's the same with the zoom and the actual size. So I can change that to make it fit again, or I can zoom in and go back to actual size. Um, the one I use the most is this perspective. So before it wasn't ticked on. So that was an orthographic view. And if I hit perspective, you can see how it changes. This can be quite important to make sure that everything is looking right. If you've got a mesh from Maya and the, you've imported it, then that could look fine. If you're sculpting something from scratch inside of ZBrush, which you can do, then you kind of want to make sure you've got perspective on, especially if you're using reference that has been taken on a camera because that has got a perspective on it from the focal length. It's not just an orthographic view. So um, often sometimes turning this on and off, if you're doing a human face especially, you can realize that you've got things slightly mismatched and it can just look a little bit weird. So this is kind of important. These other ones I don't really use. Um, we've got some transparency options down here which aren't going to help because I've only got one object in my scene. But if you had multiple objects in your scene, you can set transparency here. Just quickly, another couple of things I forgot to mention so far. So one important thing in ZBrush at the top, we've got this active points that tells you how many faces are currently in your scene. Usually when you're starting with a base mesh, this will be really low. For some reason, I've been I've exported this from Marvelous. You can see we've got stitching in here, which has taken this really high. That's why it's 300,000, but often a a base mesh will be somewhere between zero and 100,000. But yeah, that's a good thing to keep an eye on, especially when you start subdividing more. Also, I mentioned these earlier, we've got, at the moment we're set in edit mode, but we've got this move, scale, and rotate. If I click this, then you'll see this gizmo appear. So I can move my object around in 3D space. If I wanna scale it, then I can click scale and that will scale it. I can use this thing in the middle to scale it and rotate. So really these don't change now they've got this new gizmo, so this didn't used to be in ZBrush. But um, if you just click one of them, then you're able to scale, rotate, and move all at once using this gizmo. If you want to go back to old ZBrush, if you've used ZBrush before, then you can unclick this gizmo and you'll get the old system, which was this line that you had to kind of pull across, which means it is important what you why you've got these selected. So if you're wondering why these are all split up, even though you can do it all in one with this gizmo, that's why I wouldn't necessarily recommend going back to this old system. It was janky, it was hard. Just wanted to make sure you knew why these were split up and why this is there if you've used ZBrush before, if you're wondering why this has changed. But yeah, so by default, I just use this gizmo now. Um, it's a bit of a, a game changer from that old system. Um, if I'm done moving stuff, if you needed to do that in 3D space, then you just need to make sure to hit back this draw and make sure you're still in edit mode. And now I can draw to my heart's content on this mesh. Cool. So I think that probably sums up the really basics of getting started in ZBrush. This is really just the basics of how to go from the beginning, how to get an object in and how to start sculpting. We'll go through actual sculpting, adding more divisions, adding some nice detail in a separate video, but I know ZBrush can be quite an overwhelming piece of software. So I just wanted to get people up and started because that is sometimes often the hardest bit. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section below. I've been Michael Wilde. You can check out more from me on my YouTube channel. Um, you can subscribe there to be updated when the next live streams are, or you can go over to Twitch. Um, you can check out michaelwild.co.uk. I've got a mailing list there to be updated on any new tutorials that come out or any new courses that I'm making and stuff like that. Take it easy and have a great day. Cheers.